Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Monica. I like to post anti-MLM, multi-level marketing, and some true crime content here on this channel. So if any of that interests you, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I would love for you to stick around. In today's video, I am doing a collab with my friend Amanda over at Amanda MC here on YouTube. This will be part two. Part one is going to be on her channel. Today we're going to be discussing it's she has a series of lessons for Beachbody up on her on her YouTube channel. And it's just lessons that they do with you behind the scenes when you're in the MLM. And of course, this is from years ago, so it might have changed since then. And lesson number four, which is the collab that we decided to do, is social media basics. Of course, this video is for entertainment purposes only, and these are just our opinions and our experiences. We do always encourage people to do their own research. I do have to apologize for any extra background noise in this particular collab. Whenever I do any of these types of interviews, I know I say this in all my interview videos, but the highway noises are a little bit more dominant than they usually are, so I do apologize for that. But anyway, let's get into this collab with Amanda. So beach bodies, do's and don'ts, and then we'll go into the team's game plan, social mm -hmm. media game plan, right? They kind of overlap. So I don't want to like, like repeat a lot of stuff, but beach bodies, do's and don'ts. It was like post often to stay on the friends news feeds. It actually said something like on Twitter, you can post like retweet things or tweet things like 30 times. Who cares? It's Twitter. I never personally use Twitter for beach body. I, I barely use it at all. I might just, yeah. for political reasons, express myself, yeah. <laughs> but, um, or if I'm watching like a TV show where like it's live and you're trying to guess who like the masked singer is. Yeah, <laughs> <Just like Yeah. laughs> This yeah. person. Uh, they said Facebook two to four, two to four times a day. Um, but like not no more than a few hours apart. Like you don't want to do it like so many, like too close together. You need to have it equally spread out. Mm -hmm. um, in Instagram, they said like one to three times a day. But the do's and the don'ts, that really got me, right? Um, I think I, I mentioned it in my email to you. So the do's that they said were to, they like stress to share the good. So showing your best side, you're an expert, you're a leader. And like, we all know that Beachbody coaches are not experts whatsoever. You don't have to be certified. You don't have to be trained. There's zero qualifications that a Beachbody coach needs to become a beach body coach and to start trying to sell and recruit. So, but this is coming from beach body's actual like website. <laughs> Going back to Instagram when it says and post one to two or one to three times per day. I don't know how true this is now, but I remember when my beach body coach told me that when I was obviously doing beach body, but I told him, I was like, if you're going to post that many times a day on Instagram, Instagram, at the time they were, it, it, it was being kind of like spammy. And so I know that a lot of my posts were actually, I was like shadow banned um, because they weren't even showing up in the hashtags anymore. And I remember as soon as I cut it back down to like once per day, that's when I started seeing my pictures again. But every single time that I did more than one a day, it was like, that was it. Instagram wasn't having it. So I, I remember telling my coaches that and they were like, no, it, that's, it's, it's fine. And I'm like, but why am I posting it if nobody's seeing it? Isn't yeah. the whole point of it to have people see the post? <laughs> so, so they're currently followed to you that would potentially see it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. And then, and then you can always obviously carry over what you post to Instagram can carry over to Facebook mm -hmm. and then they say to you know, Facebook was two to four times a day. So I guess you could potentially add an additional post on to Facebook alone. Mm -hmm. See, um, they told me three to five times a day on Facebook. And I was like, how do I post three to five times a day and come up with like these long freaking novels that my uplines come up with? And I'm like, how many, how many different ways and how many times can I say how I felt before I lost the weight and how I feel now after losing weight? It, it yeah. just becomes like a repeat of everything. Yeah, it does. It's super repetitive. And I know that they say they, you know, if you keep talking about it, people will, if they're not immediately interested, are supposed to like come in. But it's just, 
I just think that it really just pushes people away. It's like a huge turnoff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Things, things like very subtle or small, small dosage goes like so far these days than something just constantly being like mm-hmm. thrown at you. Yeah. Maybe, like maybe that's just how social media has evolved over time. You don't always have to talk about beach body or health and fitness, share all the good things that make you who you are, be positive, be informative. The more you show people your best side, the more people will trust your opinions and recommendations. This my friend is how you build the ultimate brand, which is you. And I, I just feel like with what they say on what to do, Photos from the best parts of your day, something funny, soft selling. So like, I love P90X, but we're not supposed to talk about Beachbody, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm, in the, I'm in the best shape than I was in high school or soft recruiting. If anyone's interested, we're starting a group weight loss challenge next week. Let me know. Motivational, inspirational quotes. I did a lot of those on my Instagram, to be honest. I did a yep. lot of <laughs> success stories of people you know. I didn't have, I wasn't far enough into it to know somebody who had success stories. Personal accomplishments. I know we were always supposed to post those like before and afters. Yeah. Just to try to sell the program. And I just really felt like with Beachbody's do's and don'ts list, it was very like promoting like toxic positivity, right? Yep. Like, mm-hmm. Always the best side, always what you want to do um, or become or like what's great in the world because on their don't list, it says don't share garbage. Yep. <laughs> Which I is- thought that was so funny when it said, don't share garbage. Like, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> but, and, and then it's what's ironic. Well, I don't know if it's irony, but they were like, this probably seems like a no brainer, but seriously, don't share garbage. It's like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's, or you'll run the risk of damaging everything you've worked so hard to create. Again, you're creating this non-existent lifestyle, the lifestyle that you want people to think that you have this toxic positivity, like this positive environment that you want people to think that you live in day in and day out. And you can't post the hard stuff. It says you can't post long negative rants about your day, starting drama. You can't do any like hard selling or blatant selling, like, you know, buy this program from me or join my challenge group. Hurry, spots are filling up fast, which I thought I was did funny. That. <laughs> did I did that. I did that. We still see it to this day. Like, I only have so many spots for this challenge group. Like, no, like, it's never ending. It's a never. Yeah. It's, it's funny because I don't know. I don't know if you see the questions in my group, but I've had so many people go into my anti love Facebook group and be like, is this normal for them to say, like, only five spots available? Like, is it actually five spots? And it's like, no, I would say it was so funny. I remember the, my last challenge group. And at this point, like, I knew I was leaving Beachbody and I just what my head just was not in it anymore. And I remember posting like, oh, I have five spots available. And then like two days later or something, I would say like, oh, I only have two more spots available because I already had people reach out. Meanwhile, it was crickets in my DMs. So I literally had nobody else. It was just, I was trying to build up this like suspense. (laughs) It's the FOMO, like the fear of the spam. Like, oh, I don't, I want to get in that, I want to be the fifth, you know, I want to get that spot. Yeah. a huge, huge teams, like a huge beach body team, like do an advertisement on Instagram. And I'm, and like, they talk about that, like spots are filling up fast, get yours today or get in today. And we're like, no, like the spots don't fill up. But then they have all those people that are like, I'm so interested, sign me up. And you're like, how many of those actually are part of the downline or the upline mm-hmm. team? And how many of those are genuinely interested, like consumers or customers? I remember... Um, Yeah, I remember in in the private Facebook group that I was a part of with my team, we would actually in there, uh, we would, if one of our posts wasn't doing well, then we would say in the group, like, hey, can you comment on my post or something? Because no one's, no one's engaged with it yet. And like, so all of a sudden, that picture, that post would be bombarded with the entire team saying like, oh my God, it's the best product ever. But they wouldn't say that they were someone's upline or someone's downline, they would make it seem like they were just friends on Facebook. And it's like, if someone goes to your Facebook page, let's say that you have all of these coaches commenting on one person's post on on Facebook. 
If someone wants to take a quick look, they can click on all of those people and see that they're all the same because they're all posting the same thing and it's all Beachbody. So they're going to know that it's not just someone who is using the products. It's an actual coach. It's obvious when someone's a coach and when someone's just using the product. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, so this do's and don'ts, it says do, invite, invite, invite. Um, and then it talks about how if you get someone you know, interested in your post to, you know, when you get a response, follow up privately with the details rather than making a scene for everyone to see. I think that that's, that's why we get so many DMs, mm -hmm. you know, like I'll DM you or I'll shoot you a message. Don't be a spam artist. There's no faster way to lose followers, customers than to push product challenge group and coaching like a used car salesman. Um, but I mean, like you just said, mm -hmm. you were told to post how many times? <laughs> Yeah. Doesn't that sound like someone who's being a spam artist? Yeah. And if you, if you watched, um, Savvy Wright's books, she was reacting to Kiki's video reacting to a zoom call of like a bunch of coaches. And I, I think it was that video. I might be mistaken. Maybe it was another video, but I remember they were like bragging about how they were blocked from Facebook or they were blocked from Instagram. And oh, if you get blocked from Instagram, just go back to Facebook and badger people on Facebook. And it's almost like they were proud of it. But how are you proud of being blocked by a platform for spam messaging someone? Because that's basically what you're doing. Because if let's say that this person was actually sending out legitimate messages that didn't all look the same, most likely Facebook would see it and be like, oh, well, they're not the same message. So why are they being reported as spam and then look into it? But like, you're obviously saying the same exact thing. And uh, it's, yeah, it's annoying. <laughs> so annoying. I mean, it, it just, and it just never changes. It's just kind of like slightly evolves, but it's still mm -hmm. the same thing yep. over and over again. Um, I think it becomes harder. They're getting more desperate as people get more MLM aware. Mm -hmm. And especially as in what they refuse to admit, there's what this saturation going on mm -hmm. with people who have been in it already and have left and will never, ever do it again. Yep. And just all these other new MLM companies coming in and being created that draws competition. Cause I was told that I couldn't be in another MLM if I was in Beachbody. Yeah. I remember, uh, there was at one point it was, it was after I left, but I think they had changed something with Beachbody. Um, I forget exactly what it was, but I remember seeing a ton of people leave Beachbody because of some change that happened. I remember seeing a bunch of Beachbody coaches that I was friends with talk about it. And even some people who were really high ranking, there was this one girl who was super, super high ranking. She's already in another MLM, but she was like, she was actually making money. She was at that really high diamond level, like really, really high star diamond. I forget what number it was, but yeah, even she left Beachbody and she had been with Beachbody for at that point, I think it was six years. Yeah. So, and I know that a lot of people from her team left Beachbody and followed her to the new MLM. So, yeah, and I think um, Josie from Not the Good Girl, her YouTube yeah. channel, she actually talked to me about that in our collab that we did. She, she explained what that was because she okay. said that was 2016, I think, or 2017. I think it might have been because it was it was after I had left Beachbody, so it's probably 2017. Yeah. So she said that that was yeah. Because when I was originally talking to her, I said I was in there in Beachbody from 2016 to 2017, and then I realized no, 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 I was 15 to 16. Mm -hmm. So she said it was 2000, yeah, 17 that a, that a lot of people left, and she explained the reason why from what she saw as being that one percent. So the team social media daily game plan balance with your post. This is a lot this first paragraph actually i'm because i had to read through it real quick but it says uh i know you are excited to talk about beach body all day but posting too much about fitness or beach body will eventually annoy our friends family and network we want to post a variety of things that will engage a variety of people so going back to what you said earlier about posting like the quotes and stuff i remember they told me to do the same exact thing to kind of switch it up a little bit 
and not to make it all about fitness to make to make other posts that had nothing to do with like health and fitness it was more about your life and I remember of course I got all of like the beach body stuff and I remember I would put quotes in there I would like mix it up somewhere in there and I would kind of make it come back to my life and not just beach body so I don't yeah. know if you did the same I know that you said that you did the um the quotes and stuff like that <laughs> there actually a school that I drove by uh from work would um would have like those you know like lettering signs that says do not be afraid to fail be afraid not to try how many times have we seen that mm -hmm. posted? but I took a picture of it versus you know um going through like Canva Fine. there's a photo of me going on a hike with a couple of my girlfriends and it's like trust that God put will put the right people in your life at the right time for the right reasons and then in my post they just elaborated on it a lot of food a lot of food pics <laughs> to be honest I used to have a lot of food pictures too and I remember the whole like no excuses thing was constantly drilled in our heads so I had I, I think I put this in one of my recent videos but it was a picture of I had like a bunch of I guess you could say cheat snacks and I put post-it notes on it and I put like, do not eat until, and then the date. And I remember like, I took a picture of that. I put it on. To be honest. Yeah. I, mean, I felt the need to have to do that. Cause I, I deal with like kind of binge or like, if I'm not paying attention, I can totally overeat a whole bag of chips. Oh like, yeah, I me can, too. My, my, I'm not in tune with when my stomach says I'm full. Mm -hmm. I'm the same <laughs> like, exact way. Especially if I'm bored or distracted, if I'm just watching TV or if I'm like really stressed. And so it's, it's a tough reality to be in, but yeah. to like, yeah, like to have to, for you to have to be feeling like you're in that position to be telling yourself when you can and cannot eat something, mm -hmm. but then to be like, this looks like a perfect social media post, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm like showcasing it. Like that's a struggle. Yeah, it, it, shouldn't, is. it shouldn't be a relatable struggle, but unfortunately it probably is very relatable to a lot of people. Yeah. I think uh -huh. that was like something I was trying to, I was trying to be more relatable to show that like, yeah, it, I do have an issue with like eating a lot of things all at the same time, but no excuses. You can do it kind of a thing. After all, the more people you have interested in what you're doing, the more chance of you having, or the more chance you have of signing up more coaches and getting more customers and clients. So again, the focus is on getting coaches, creating your downline. It's not about helping people. It's not about selling a product, which would be what makes this an MLM or a non-pyramid scheme, right? Mm -hmm. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, in our opinion. <laughs> In our opinions, of course, it's about getting, it's about recruiting. Like mm -hmm. that was before the actual getting customers and clients. And then they recommend posting two to three times a day to get exposure and stay in the news feeds. But it says, choose what best works best for you and make a schedule. Most importantly, stick to it. Consistency is key. And that came up a lot in this, in this plan was the whole, uh, consistency and it does talk about like time zone differences so mm -hmm. making sure that you're not doing like I think this is like a challenge group call to action at like 7 p.m because it might be too, like on pacific time because it might be too late in the mm -hmm. evening for people on the east coast to get yeah. it and, like they won't read it because they're already settling in bed but one of the things that I thought was interesting because you you see it in some posts but then you see the opposite opposite of it in a lot of posts. And I think that it's very manipulative. The, the goal with our social media posts and what we're saying is to help more people. So it's you versus I serve versus sell. So shift your focus in your post from what you are doing to how you can help them. Stop thinking about what you are or aren't and focus on what you do know and what you want them to know. Wouldn't it be awesome if your friends and family came to you instead of avoiding you when you talk about Beachbody? Well, that can happen if you change the way you communicate with them. Are you selling or serving? Take a look at the social media. At your social media, is it about you or them? And so it gave like examples. What not to do is I am hiring. Well, we see that all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all the time. Not, I would say not so much in Beachbody. I definitely see it in like, like Fry okay. and some of the makeup ones. Yep. I do too. It says to, to not say 
I am starting a new XYZ group next week. It's going to be amazing. Me, amazing message me if you want to join. But I, I specifically remember being told to post something like that for me like, too. so I'm like, so I'm thinking like, well, this, my team is telling me not to post it like that. But then I'm reading and it says, join me November 16th for a clean eating before Thanksgiving free five day challenge group. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, and I, that I got approval from my upline. So yeah, I used to do that all the time. <laughs> I used to do that all the time. Yeah. And then it says, do you notice how these use I and me a lot? How is that serving others? It sounds a lot like your personal gain. Here are some examples that are more about serving others and meeting the needs of others. This is what bothered me. And I'm, I'm sure it would bother you too, reading it out loud, right? Have you ever wondered how to make ends meet at the end of each month when the kids have soccer uniforms to buy or birthday parties to go to? I totally get it. A home-based business can help you fill in the gaps. And I would love to share how I have been able to make it work. Message me. Or are you struggling to figure out how to start living healthier and get your family involved? I have compiled some of my best tips that are working for my family. Message me if you want a list of quick tips. So it's very manipulative and income claims. <laughs> yep. I claims, time freedom claims. <laughs> Yeah, my, I think that first one really pisses me off the most because it's like you're targeting moms or dads. You can be targeting dads too, but it's, I don't know. It's almost like they're trying to guilt trip. I'm trying to reread it while I'm also talking at the same time. But like the whole, when the kids have soccer uniforms to buy or birthday parties to go to, I totally get it. And it's like, what? How is that, how is that a good business practice? And I know before any MLM reps that are watching this, before any of them come for me and say, well, there's issues in other industries. Yes, there are. And there are scummy behaviors in every single industry. I mean, why do you think people always reference used car salesmen as like in a negative manner? Obviously there's a reason for it, but I don't know. I just, I don't see how saying things like this how can you be okay with saying things like that and then getting this person to join your team and maybe that's the last i forget how much a starter kit is but like a hundred something dollars so they're spending all that money and maybe that's what would have paid for their their kids food for the week or for like a couple days or whatever i don't know i just that one really yeah. pissed me off yeah and we still see it to this day. And mm -hmm. this is coming directly from my upline and came from your upline when, mm -hmm. you know, and we're, we're told, this is proof that we are told that this is an okay comment to make. Mm -hmm. And it's not okay. I feel like, and, that, and it's comments like that, like examples like that, that remind me of my friend that got suckered into joining Mary Kay. And I mentioned it in my video with her same point it's just like she really she was working multiple jobs because she had this growing family and she didn't have like the whole a whole bunch of support from her husband at the time but she was trying to do what she could to have like that dream to have to be able to pay for things for her kids but it's like that's taking money off of their school uniforms or their dinner for the the week when you're giving this false hope false narrative that they are going to be successful in this business yeah. to be able to have those to be able to provide for the family and she was under a lot of stress and it's, it was very cult like for her when she was involved in it so she just got rid of the people that were considered like naysayers um in her life and it's just very unfortunate because i know she could have used the money that she worked really hard for in her other jobs that she had at the time Mm -hmm. versus putting it in towards product and shilling mary Kay. if you think your business is all about sales you are dreadfully wrong <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I think that's proof right there <laughs> that you make money from recruiting. Yeah. Not well, just from selling. That it, it does say it's about changing people's lives for the better, but how are we doing that? This is no. perfect example that this is not just about the products and that you need to recruit. Like I want to expose this kind of stuff because it is the upline. They're getting it from Beachbody. We don't know the do's and don'ts from Beachbody, but then like this is the teens 
you know, mm-hmm. game action. It's like, yeah, we need to expose it because it's not just corporate. It's not yeah. just, and it's both of them. And this is yeah. how like innocent people make really poor decisions when they're trying to recruit other people. I know that you're, you're big on, and I've, I've tried to vocalize it more in my videos, but like big on trying not to blame the, you know, the, the regular, you know, pun, you know, mm-hmm. representative, member, consultant, coach, whatever we want to call them, um, which whatever MLM that they belong to, but it's, it's like, they're not 100% at fault for what they say because they're being influenced by their higher ups, their upline and the corporation themselves. Mm-hmm. So we just have to be very, we have to be kind in our approach to them. We could be annoyed, you know? Yeah. But- and, and I think that that's why so many people are anti MLM is that there is like, it, it is annoying. It's documents like these that show that it's proof that this is coming from the company and this is just what we're told to say. Do I think that there are some people that are at the tippy tippy top and are really actually scamming people? Yes, I do think that there's both of it's mostly the company because of course this has to come from somewhere. So this is coming from the company and a lot of the CEOs and stuff too. I mean, they jump around from company to company. If you look at Evera, that guy's been in charge of um, native, which I don't think was, it was more of just like a regular business, but there was also another makeup MLM. Um, there was unique. He was a part of as well. Okay. I found a post in my Instagram where I was like, um, kind of did the whole like serve, like it's you, not I type of thing. I took the I and me out of the post. And so, <laughs> and this was like literally the day after I was, I was cross-referencing the date. And it's like the day after I got this lesson. And my post says, it's like an image of me looking stupid. <laughs> like pride and how far you have come and have faith in how far you can go. And in the comment, it says, it is so important to stay focused on your goals. Don't forget to remind yourself of your success and progress. Clap, clap. Acknowledging your progress allows that mighty faith to thrive, that you are not done developing, crafting, sculpting your future. You own this. (laughs) That's so funny. But it was all about them. It was all about you. It was not about me. Mm Mm-hmm. Even though I made a very cheesy, cheesy self of myself while I did this. <laughs> yep. Yep. Or, or it'll be like, Shakeology, it changed my life. And I'm so concerned about your food intake. So you should totally try Shakeology. <laughs> yeah. And then I had a, the first step to achieving any goal is deciding you're not willing to stay where you're at. I'm like, did you know that only 88% of people achieve their goals they set out to make on New Year's? And then it just goes on and on and on. <laughs> what are your goals to help hold yourself accountable? What goals do you have? Let me help you achieve them. So I totally took that point apparently and ran with it, but not in like a manipulative way of being like, you're, you can get financial success because I wasn't seeing that. So I wasn't going to post Mm -hmm. that and my my target audience wasn't like mom or stay-at-home moms or anything like that under the consistency is crucial portion it says you will never come across as pushy or desperate if you focus your message on how your products host opportunity or business opportunity will benefit their life and not your own so a lot of times what this was okay so my upline told me to do this but also talk about myself and like my transformation and all that so my my upline she focused a lot on our transformation but talk about what our life was like before and then compare it to like what our life is like now and then that would be a way for us to be able to maybe if there's someone out there that's feeling that same way that we did before that it would like speak to them or something like that but they, they did always get us to, like, when we would cold message people, they would say, like, well, you know, don't make it too scripted, but here's what you can go off of. Just change the name and blah, blah, blah. And then they would say, like, make sure that you make it sound as though this can help them and that this will better their life. 
But at the same time, though, and this is what I talk about on my channel a lot is, and, and I said this the other day, actually, is that this is almost like shame, like body shaming in a sense, because when, when we're talking about beach body, for example, because you're, you're going, they're telling you to try to make it seem like this is going to better this person's life. But if I were to go up to someone who was super duper fit and maybe this person had some kind of issue with their body, then that's just going to make them feel even worse. And I, and, and that's the thing is that when it comes to the health and wellness MLMs, yeah, okay, talk about how the product will help them and stuff like that, but you don't know what someone's going through and what their body has gone through. So you, it's very, very invasive. I feel like the health and wellness MLMs are very, very invasive. You can do more damage than good because, I mean, it's not just the health and wellness though, because if you look at like the skincare ones, that can do more damage because you don't know what that person's skin is like. You don't know if they have, like, I just heard Savvy say it on her live today where she has eczema. So it's like, you don't know if that person is sensitive to certain things. Or even when it comes to makeup, there might be an ingredient in some kind of makeup that someone's allergic to and they they have to look into the products and so I don't know it's just I don't know I feel like they're just very invasive yeah it really like it's like walking a fine line because you know there's there's a lot of companies that have like a lot of products out there like in stores and mm -hmm. but it's like it's the customer's responsibility when they go to buy a product to kind of because they're making the purchase they're going in there they're actively trying to purchase the product and juice you know like i mean when i was down there in arizona for my mom i totally forgot to pack a facial moisturizer but i didn't want to so i went to the store to go get one just like the grocery store um because that's the only place i was willing to go because <laughs> it's mm -hmm. you know teen time so i was like i'm only gonna go to the grocery store and that's it and, but I didn't want to get a full size bottle of something. Cause I'm like, I'm traveling, like what's a yeah. full size bottle of anything going to do for me. So I was looking for something not extremely expensive, but that would be okay for my sensitive skin. And so I got this sensitive skin moisturizer and I felt, I ended up with like this huge, I felt like I got a sunburn on my face. It gave me a chemical burn all over my face. My eyes wouldn't stop watering. It was, and it's for sensitive skin. So it's like, that was Obviously, I found out that something in that didn't work for yeah. me. Yeah. But when you're a when you are somebody that's trying to sell a product to someone, it's that responsibility is shared. You know, like if you're trying to sell a product to someone, not knowing what their needs are, really, and what mm -hmm. they have sensitivities to, and not being able to assess their skin or to know what their dietary lifestyle really is, or um their relationship with food and body image or that sort of thing. And so it's like a, a mutual responsibility. I actually um, am trying to finish processing this video that I did on, on an Herbalife hun mm -hmm. who was like, she made a, a point saying like, Herbalife is for everybody, but it's not for everybody. And I was like, that's a good point, but she makes so many false points in the mm -hmm. video. So debunking it, but yeah. you know, it's just, so it's, I kind of like was going through the same thing with her video, just trying to like say, can't just blanketly say that this is okay for everyone because mm -hmm. it very well might not be. The next paragraph just says like on your friends list, there's tons of people every day who will eventually flip the switch in their mind and you never know when that will be happening. I so that every MLM, right? Yeah. And that goes back to the whole like, no, doesn't mean no. It just means not right now. That's like the perfect... That's the perfect way of them wording it without sounding so predatory. Yeah. Cause I don't think I heard that necessarily. I might've had it in like a text conversation with my direct upline, but it mm -hmm. was, at least I don't think I saw it in any of my actual uh, lessons moving mm -hmm. forward. Motivation Monday, man crush Monday. Which one did you use? <laughs> Both. <laughs> But like, but after a while, I couldn't do Man Crush Monday because how many times can I post a picture of my fiance and be like, oh my God, I love him. Like, oh gosh. I yeah. never did Man Crush Monday because my marriage was on the rocks like way before I even started Beachbody, but yeah, during, and I, I, it's so like 
so cringe to like my core <laughs> about um, one of the things that I was told to do when I was told to make my Facebook more public was to change like the banner image. Mm -hmm. And I did that and I'll, I'll share that with you, what it used to look like. And I remember using Canva for this and I sent it to my upline and she's like, oh my God, this is so perfect. But it was like, it was just like this inspirational quote and it was, had God in it. And I'm not, a, I mean, I'm Christian, but I'm, I don't, I'm not very public and outward about it. That's just mm -hmm. like a religion that I grew up, you know, learning about. And so mm -hmm. then I went to church on my own and something that, you know, I was, I chose to be baptized as a young adult in my twenties, but it's not something that I'm like, I'm not going to be talking about that. It's a personal yeah. thing, it's a personal choice to me. I, I keep it personal. Yeah. And and, um, and I remember like doing like the taking a part of my banner was a picture of my husband at the time and I on our wedding day in the prayer and then had this like prayer quote and then and then a before and after photo of me and the same part and it was just like it was just trying to combine the two and mm -hmm. I know a lot of um, you know with the whole brainwashing cult mentality and how that can also cross over into religion. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but a lot of the personal development that I ended up picking up was Christian-based personal development. And so at that time, I kind of started getting more and more into posting about that stuff, even though I wouldn't have normally posted it on social media. Yeah. So I just, it's so cringe for me to think about it. <laughs> yeah. Like the only thing that I, I really involved my husband at the time in was changing that banner image but I never, ever did a man crush Monday, but I did do that. And it was very religious based plus the whole like before and after because of beach body, um, inspiration thing. That was just bad. So the next one transformation Tuesday or Tuesday treat, I did transformation Tuesday. And then I would also sometimes do taco Tuesday, but I would have like a healthy taco. So that was my whole thing. But yeah, I think the taco was like ground turkey, and I forget what I used for the shell, but it was really weird. It was really weird. Uh, next one, Wednesday hump day wellness day. Yeah, um, I remember doing both. I think to this day, I still use both. I remember trying after, after way after Beachbody, I tried to do like a wellness Wednesday type of thread. Mm -hmm. on my on my Instagram I didn't keep it up I was very inconsistent about it I don't think I ever used either of these but <laughs> the hump day thing just reminded me of when I was in Beach Friday I was working at this one company and do you remember that commercial with like the camel and it's like hump day yeah so we had <laughs> So we had one of my coworkers, he did the voice perfectly. And we had like this open space of like cubicles, right? And so all of our cubicles were really low. So if you just like peeped your head like this, like people saw your head. And I just remember he would say it so loud every single Wednesday that all of the departments heard him. And it was just so funny. I actually ended up getting him for Christmas one year, a little hump day. Um, coffee mug but yeah I don't remember what I did for Wednesdays I know that I did like woman crush Wednesday too and I would tag like my team and stuff and like post like some of their pictures and like some of their um like if I had in my challenge group if like one of my girls because I I had all girls in my group um but like if one of them came to me with like something really good, whether it be weight loss or I stuck to my my food plan or whatever, then I would do like a woman crush Wednesday, like shout out to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Woman crush Wednesday is very popular these days. Um, yeah. It's funny that you said that, though, because at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, it says challenger fellow coach team member shout out. So it's oh, well, like there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Two birds with one stone. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think everyone did throwback Thursday. Uh, yeah, I, I did thirsty I was... Thursday. I but... posted pictures of a lot of water on Thursdays. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yep. I, I put a lot of pictures of water and how important water is on every single freaking Thursday. Um, like water. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, yeah. People always tell me when they watch my videos, they're like, that's where the Jersey accent is when you say water. And I'm like, there's only certain, I don't sound like I'm from Jersey. My fiance does so. But like for me, I don't know. I think it's because he worked closer to the city, whereas I didn't for my entire life. And his family lived closer, like his grandfather lived closer to the city. So only certain words that I say sound Jersey or it's like water. When I get pissed off, sometimes you can hear it more. But yeah, Thirsty Thursday was always about order. Friday, Flashback Friday and Flex Friday. Oh, girl, I was so good with these two. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Flex Friday. I still do those to my day, to, to today. Yeah. Well, not lately, but yeah, yeah. This I remember... I remember doing, and this is going to give an idea if a Beachbody coach is watching this, but when I would on Flex Fridays, sometimes I would do like the relatable posts where like you do like a flex picture, then next to like a relaxed picture in your picture. And you're like, look, this is a relaxed picture and this is me flexing. So see, not always perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag relatable. Oh my gosh, yes. I, I think I even did say relatable. Oh my gosh. I can't with my past Tunbot self. Next one, Saturday. Saturday night. Um, I don't know what I did on Saturdays. I don't think I really posted Saturdays unless it was like a date night out or something. I think, oh, I would post my Saturday morning workout and then my breakfast on Saturdays. Cause I had more time. Oh, and then I would go food shopping on Saturday. So I would take a picture of my cart with all of my healthy foods in it to show that, see, you got to stick to your meal plan. And then Sunday, selfie Sunday or Sunday fun day. Um, I didn't do selfie Sunday and I didn't do, well, sometimes I did Sunday fun day, but that was my day where I would put like my um, meals for the week or whatever. Usually, was was this a rest day or an active rest day with 21 day fix? I can't remember, but there was one day where I don't remember, but at one point I was working out two, sometimes three times a week. So in the beginning of, um, or a day, in the beginning of Beachbody, I remember when I started it before I was even a coach, I would work out during lunchtime. I would go to kickboxing after work. And then when I got home, I would do 21 day fix. So... Wow. Yeah. So I think that that's how I lost so much weight in the beginning. And that's why like all the coaches were always like, oh my God, can I use your before and after transformation picture? Cause there's like a big difference and it's like, yeah, but it's not just beach body, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, I know that I would go to the gym to do some like more strength training exercises. And then I have an elliptical at home. And so sometimes I would do elliptical and then do my, you know, whatever workout whatever it was, whether, whether it was Pio or 21 day fix or the chisel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, I think when I did T25 before I was a beach body coach, I just did T25. I didn't do any additional exercise, but I also wasn't on like a very strict like diet. I didn't, I couldn't follow that diet plan at all. 21 day fix was more followable with the containers and everything. Um, but when I think when with all the other subsequent Beachbody ex, uh, workouts, I did additional workouts in including, you know, it wasn't just that program that gave me that result, but that's what I posted. So it's almost like giving this false advertising because there was so much more involved than just 21 day fix alone or the chisel, hammer and chisel. Yeah. One. This is the best time of day and time of week to post it says monday through thursdays are your peak posting days friday during the day is all right but anything really after four to five is going to be lost in the shuffle of people ready to start their weekend and then weekends are the worst time to post because people aren't by their computer or checking social media as often and or aren't in the mood to talk about fitness programs or products monday is usually the best day to post because people are coming off the weekend. Well, that actually does make sense with the best time of uh, day. Wait, best time of day and time of week to post. There we go. Wow, can't talk. Those do make sense though, because most of the time when I was talking to, to potential clients, it was usually Monday through Thursday because people want to go out during the weekend. They don't want to think about this kind of stuff. So 
that was usually when I was really pushing Beachbody on, well, not Beachbody, but pushing all my stuff on social media was Monday through Thursday. But, and I remember if I didn't post, and this was something about Sundays where if I didn't post a picture of my meal on Sunday of like my meals for the week, I would get really, really, really upset about it. And I remember the one time, um, I took the picture too late because my fiance and I had to go do something in the morning and it was something that like we couldn't move. And I remember being so upset when we got home because the picture wasn't perfect enough. And he was like, what is wrong with you? It's an Instagram picture for beach body. So yeah. Uh, So that that's just like kind of like the mindset that people get into. It's it's like, they you need to post. It's it's not, it does become a chore. I feel like everything else in your email and in the documents that you sent me, it was basically like what I was told. And, but a lot of the things too is things that like, if you look at their do's and their don'ts, a lot of the things that they say to do and to don't do is like swapped almost. And then we still see it. We still yeah. see it now. <laughs> We still see it to this day. Um, yeah, I think it's it's just my my uh, teaching apparently was supposed to be more self paced. Like as if I went through it faster, she would send me the lessons faster. I I mean it 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 makes me good to know or happy to know that at least you feel like you've kind of seen this all before. Because I don't know if if that's how today's teaching goes on. I'd be curious to know with the newer ex speech body coaches if they're like oh yeah we were told these exact same social media um methods and when to post and how to post and what to post and what not to post um i think social media has gotten so evolved over the last you know three to five four years that um people are more savvy about it even before joining a multi-level marketing company so Mm -hmm. They're probably a, a lot better at it than I was then. That's why I feel like I'm so cringe and embarrassed about my post. <laughs> <laughs> Just so bad. <laughs> yeah, I cringe when it pops up on my memories. I just see these posts and I'm just like, what were you thinking? And I know a lot of ex body coaches too. And they all say the same thing, but it's, you look at these posts and you're just like, why did I think this was okay? Or why did I post something like this, like something so vulnerable? Because I feel as though one of the tactics that they use is to show how vulnerable you are so that it makes you hashtag relatable. Um, And it makes other people think like, oh, she's not just trying to sell me a product. She's trying to sell me this dream of like being healthier or losing weight or whatever the case may be. But yeah, it's, it's all... I feel like all of it is just one big marketing tactic and they will use whatever they can. Like over the last week, I've had people reach out to me and send me posts. And I don't know what it is, but this past week, these reps literally use anything to sell their products or their opportunity. And I think I I posted it in another, in my nurse versus ML versus MLM video when I was talking about nurses being like the number one ranking profession and for Mm -hmm. respect and ethical standards. And I think like marketing and car salesmen was like super low on that list. Mm -hmm. I know you were talking about that earlier in our conversation about how, you know, they're getting compared to salespeople, you know, but it's like, well, they're, they're kind of a form of marketing Mm -hmm. directors and they're, that type of profession, marketing executives and whatever, they're not considered all that high of a standard yeah. <laughs> on professionalism, ethics, and morality either, because it is all about manipulating the narrative. Um, yep. And I think MLMs are really, really good about manipulating vulnerable people. <laughs> so yeah. just to sell a lifestyle via a product, And it's just, I mean, and and I know that some reps are going to be like, oh, well, it happens all the time. And yes, it does happen all the time in other industries. It does. But that's not, that's not the point of this particular video. But yeah, I mean, 
like when I look at some of my posts, my past posts, I was being manipulative without even knowing that I was being manipulative because I was basically doing whatever my upline told me to do. And I know that it goes back to like, oh, well, if your best friend told you to jump off a bridge, would you actually do it? And, and like, I know that it goes back to that, but when you're being taken under someone's wing and when they're showing you how they made it in this company or in this industry of network marketing, MLM, whatever you want to call it, then you kind of want to do exactly what they did because you want to be able to achieve that success too. So in your mind, you just don't even realize that you're manipulating people until it's too late, or you are very well aware that you're manipulating people and you don't care. Yeah. So. And those are the people that need to get called out, the ones that know and don't care. Yep. I agree. And the ones that don't know, I would just hope that videos like this and all of our other content against MLM can help open their eyes and help them see that this probably isn't the kind of business they want to be part of and be proud of being part of. All right, everyone, if you have watched up to here, thank you so much for watching and make sure to like this video, subscribe if you want to stick around and I'll see you guys next time. This is Monica reporting to you live from a highway. Bye.